Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to the channel. So Jinjack brought up this topic which I didn't go into much detail and actually completely forgot to mention in my previous video here uh, is about physicality and mental toughness. Understand this mind force, this energy, this chi. Now, strength in my system, structure, and then state. Because at the end of the day, physicality matters and fatigue makes cowards of us all. Have you been put into that place of desperation when you're so tired and are you capable of continuing? From my own experience, I've had matches go on where my coach is shouting me to do things and I'm just looking at him like, screw you my dude, I want to take a nap right now. I have this photo put onto my fridge to remind me not to be in the wrong weight division ever again. You're not filling out nicely, you're fatter than ever. I'm not fat, I'm getting in shape. Because when you get into the heavier weight divisions, strength and physicality goes up. And if you can't deal with that, you're going to get fatigued. I've had matches that are so physical, right? I'm, when I'm talking about matches, I'm just talking about jujitsu, right? I've had matches that are so physical that I've been puking in the toilet after them. I've even had a student puke in a bin at the <laughs> venue <laughs> um, after a match because it was just so physical. And he's a fit guy even, you know? He's got great cardiovascular ability. And when it comes to self-defense scenarios, are you capable of dealing with with that adrenaline dump when facing a high stress situation because it is going to happen. Nerves and adrenaline is going to kick in and that can give you that adrenaline dump and you're not going to know how to handle that because when you are fatigued, things just go out the window. You can't think straight. You're acting out of emotion basically. So that's why it's very important to train and test those skills under conditions where you are fatigued. This is the thing with the more experienced fighter coming into play. From what I've experienced from boxing, I've had more physicality in uh, <laughs> from an ADCC match than what I've had in a boxing fight. But that's just my own experience. It's not um, set in stone for everyone. But this is so important to mention because you could be this skilled fighter and you just come across this unit of a human being and you are not going to be able to deal with it. It's probably going to look something like this. And here we go on the replay. They're lifting up on the power driver. Now they're closing the distance. There's the right hand. As he oh, at the end of the day, my money is still on the MMA guy because if the MMA guy is a serious competitor, um, when people do MMA, they're most likely going to be a serious competitor than just a hobbyist. The thing is, that person, that an MMA fighter is going to be an athlete and they're going to focus on physical conditioning and they're going to be more competitive. So when it comes to strength, cardio and me mental toughness, my money is still on the MMA fighter. Is Wing Chun effective? You got to look at what context. It's because uh, when it comes to Wing Chun, there's people that do competitions. So you've got the street and then you've got competition. So I teach sport and street. It's not common for instructors to teach the sport side of martial arts, especially when- But it doesn't look as physical as MMA. And then you've got guys that just focus on the self-defense aspect and apparently they just don't spar. That is a problem. During the week while thinking of making this video, I was actually reminded of this individual here, Alan Orr, and he makes great content uh, regarding Wing Chun and MMA. So I think you should check him out. Anyway, that's all I really wanted to mention in this video. So until next time, take care.